this has been exciting to see everybody. The, just the diversity of us, and it's marvelous to be with this group. So thank you all. Um, my project is a little different, um, although it's all different, obviously. <laughs> but but um, in that, it's it's not that I'm going to be spending. It's kind of a mix of doing some research or working with my colleague here doing some research and. But the primary focus of the project is helping, is with basically curriculum development. It's sort of helping create a new program that they've been planning for a number of years now. And of course, with COVID, things all kind of got sidetracked a bit. Um, but um, but it's to help them develop this this new program and and. Um, And it's a program in community psychology. I will venture to say that most of you have no clue what community psychology I'm, is. You do? Yeah. Right. I was a psychologist. Okay. Um, so, so to help you understand what that means here, it's it's, it's really focused on. I, when I tell people I'm a psychologist, they often think I'm a clinical psychologist. So I'm going to be psychoanalyzing them or doing some crazy thing like that. And um, and and so I often have to then tell them that really, no, this is not about individuals. It's about systems. It's about communities. It's about how do we change communities to make them more effective? How do we change programs to make them more effective for the people who are involved with them or who are what I often refer to as the purported beneficiaries of it? Because uh, sometimes those who are the purported beneficiaries don't benefit a whole heck of a lot, and other people do, and vice versa. And so, but it's really focused more on prevention uh, as opposed to treatment types of things. The focus is on changing systems, not individuals. Although, again, when students are are sort of learning about this, they say, "Well, I want to work with people." I say, "Well." Of course I work with people, I work with people all the time, but it's in a very different sort of capacity. It's a collegial relationship where we're trying to help them work together, well, we're working together to help change systems as opposed to working to focus on individual level types of problems. And the other thing is that there's a really strong emphasis on, on what's going right. Uh, what are the strengths? How can we build upon them as opposed to always looking at what's wrong uh, with people or communities? Um, as some folks have, have talked about, that, that difference is around uh, John McKnight, who's a, a sociologist, who uh, would talk about how going into a community, and if you go, you know, talking about people's problems or doing, quote, a needs assessment is kind of like having someone come onto a job interview and say, well, what are you bad at? You know, what are, the, what are the horrible things that you do? And, um, and that's demoralizing and, and problematic. And so what we really want to do is help uh, change the communities and systems to improve the well-being of the people within them. And, and that is from their perspective what that means, not what we determine is their well-being. Uh, and a good focus of it is on using very applied research to understand and guide change. So if we don't know how well programs are working or who's benefiting from them, or if anybody's benefiting at all from them, uh, then it's really hard to know how we might go about affecting change. Um, and a key part of this, again, is the notion of partnerships. It's how do we develop long-standing partnerships in the community with people who are embedded in the community, who are part of the community, and how do we mutually learn, how do we engage in collaborative change efforts as opposed to, again, outsiders coming in and either telling them what they need to do or, or whatever. Um, and so I'm an emeritus professor of psychology, uh, and I'm very proud of an emeritus uh, <laughs> Retired in July. Um, and I've directed this community psychology program at master's levels and undergraduate levels and PhD levels for, for many years. And what I have done for a long time is done applied research addressing early childhood interventions, mental health, homelessness, there are a whole host of things. And, and I often describe my research as being opportunistic in the sense that where is there an issue in the community that somebody already there has concerns about, they want to affect some change, and how can I be supportive of them as opposed to sort of theory-based or guided 
And of course, it, it is based on theory and guided by that, but the driving force is always what is the need in the community as identified by the community. And so, um, so that has led around to lots of different places. And, and also what that means is that in working with, with university colleagues as well as community colleagues, it is we're colleagues, and that it is a matter of um, working with people who want to work together. You know, I mean, there are too many arrogant academics who think they know everything, and I have no use for them, quite honestly. Um, and I don't want to work with them, and so I don't. Um, evaluation of existing programs is a really big part of what I have done over the years, and uh, and, and work to engage them when we're in, in teaching and uh, implementing training programs. And the major focus is on having students get engaged in the community very early on. It's been a hallmark of our training throughout that they start out at the first uh, part of their graduate training where they are working with community organizations and working with and sort of for them, which really makes a, a big difference in terms of their ability to be able to do that kind of work, because I think you really learn by doing it. Um, the other piece that has sort of led me to this is over the years I've been have been in different leadership roles in the Society for Community Research and Action, which is a national, international, I like to say it's international, but it's mostly US-centric, um, organization that um, is the sort of professional home for community psychologists in a sense. And, and that's important in a minute because I'll, for reasons I'll play. Um, Rodrigo uh, Carlos is, is my host here and he, uh, He's a, a researcher at the Center for Studies in Welfare and Social Coexistence, kind of a nice long name, and a member of the research faculty at the Universidad de Desarrollo, and uh, it's Arroyo. Um, and he's really interested in these collaboration processes and so on, and he's been working uh, for a number of years doing some research on to sort of evaluate the impact of Chile Crece Contigos, which is their a universal early childhood intervention program that was developed 12 years ago now or something like that. And uh, back when uh, Chile was, uh, Chile's president was a pediatrician. Uh, and so they created this universal early childhood program to try to support uh, kids uh, from an early age and to some degree their families with sort of different levels of of different tiers of support for those who have greater levels of need versus those who are who don't. And um, so I've been working with him over the last couple of years since we've you know, been planning to be here um, to help him in doing some qualitative types of analyses of families who are in this program and what has it been like for them to be able to access any kind of services. and as I was saying a few minutes ago, that it is very frequently the case with these programs that often get lots of good publicity and Chile Crisis Contigos has been widely recognized around the world as sort of a model program and it, like many other model programs, has major gaps in terms of what it can actually do for families. And, uh, and, and a lot of that goes back to the notion that um, Professionals, policymakers, and so on do this um, top down sort of initiation of programs without a whole lot of feedback from the people who are actually engaged in them and who are actually the purported beneficiaries, if you will. And so, um, so we've been doing some work together on that, uh, not as much as we would like. And again, COVID had made some, had, had some problems with that. Um, and he's been teaching undergraduate and doctoral students in community psychology, and he's the co-designer with his colleague Jaime, oh, uh, Jaime, uh, uh, to develop this program. Um, so, interestingly, what happened is in, in 2019 at an SCRA conference, uh, we got together and found that, gosh, there, he is much my junior in terms of a colleague, um, although most. Is these days, and so um, 
he was wanting to kind of learn about how to develop such a program and so on. And so he also has um, wanted to increase his skills in applied research and program evaluation, which is something I've been doing for a long, long time. And we also then had this mutual interest in early childhood and, and so on, because I've been doing work on early childhood programs in Charlotte for years and years. So plans were made then at that conference for Rodrigo, Rodrigo to come to Charlotte, which he did for about a week in that fall, and kind of look at what, we're, what we've been doing, and then to apply for the Fulbright, and so here we are. Um, so what are we going to do? One of the things that I had this kind of recognition and, and chatted with Craig about the other day was about how that, you know, despite the fact that you know, we put together this lovely proposal to come here and do stuff, um, we've really not talked a whole lot about it in the last two years. Um, we've we've <laughs> done we read mine. <laughs> we've, 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 we've done some things together, and um, and but but not a whole lot. And and again, the the, the pandemic put the development of a new program on hold. And um, but but they are still wanting to do that. Where originally they were going to start in. Now they're thinking maybe in 2023 they can actually start a program. Of course, as you all know, if you're involved with universities, how long any of those processes take to actually happen. And so, um, so we're going to work on this program and see about how we can do this and and uh, and build support within the faculty of psychology at UDD and within the university more broadly and uh, do the same sort of things in some sense that we've been doing, but of course what's going to be really critical is to kind of get, and, and Rodrigo and I sat and chatted over coffee a couple of days ago, and, and it's hard to imagine, I've only been here three days, but, <laughs> um, and about what that would look like, and so uh, I encouraged him to invite his dean on Friday, um, and to uh, start seeing about how we can kind of maximize the political benefit of that uh, for him and for the potential of a program. And so um, we're, we're going to be developing that kind of a program and also working to advance the research with Chile Drink Crazy Contigos because, um, again, some of that has been put on hold. The third piece of what we're going to be doing, in essence, is to um, identify some opportunities for ongoing collaboration across universities. There is a sort of a regional network of community psychologists that generally, as far as I know, it's a very loose network and they don't necessarily talk to each other very much. So we'll see if we can try to uh, build that, not only within Chile, but also in Argentina. Um, some of the challenges that, that I see uh, to look forward to is that uh, UDD is a very, very different institution from mine. Uh, it's a private university that, uh, as best I can tell, um, caters largely to a fairly affluent population in Chile. Uh, the notion of their, uh, most of my time is spent addressing the needs of people who are poor and who have a whole host of other needs and disabilities and that sort of thing. And so, but that's also where, you know, in terms of the values and orders of a community psychology fit very well, is how do we help uh, provide advantage for, for folks that are otherwise somewhat disadvantaged. And so how well this plays to that student population is going to be interesting to see. It's going to, you know, that we, we've had for years in our university have had uh, the university administration uh, has often wondered why we don't uh, get more corporate funding. Mm -hmm. well, corporations don't damn about poor people, you know, I mean, and, and that's not where money is. And so that's what we would have to tell them all the time. Um, they also would always want me to then, I mean, because we have pulled in a lot of external funding and that sort of thing over the years, and so they'd want some pictures, you know, sh do something. Well, pictures for me are like this room. You know, that's boring as all get out. We don't have great pictures like some of my guys do. Um, and so, you know, show us in action. Yeah, we're sitting around the table talking with each other, planning stuff, you know? Um, and so, um, 
that's always been something of a challenge, and so selling this is, is sometimes a little bit difficult. But, um, but on the other hand, I think that uh, there's a lot of potential, and, and I'm really looking forward to it. I think this will be fun. Um, and so uh, Rodrigo, when we talked the other day, I, I found myself getting renewed in my excitement about being here because it was like, oh, yeah, I should do something now. And, um, and they're still excited about having this new program. And, and there are some challenges because there are two community psychologists in their faculty. So creating a new program on that, so it's been, and, but they have some applied social, and so uh, I think we can make it work. But it's, it's going to be an interesting uh, nudging, shaping, encouraging, thinking about possibilities type of effort over the next few months. So that's what I'm doing. <laughs>